Hello, hello, Nikki here of Life I Design. Today I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about the last few books that I've bought um, that I think are really great for you to check out. If you've been in my creative space at all in these last few years, you know how much I value books and learning from books and using them in my personal art practice, in um, personal development, in things that I'm curious about learning more of. I wasn't um, always someone who enjoyed school and I think it's because I wanted to be in control of what I was learning and what I was studying. I am a voracious reader. I tend to have five books going at a time. I'm a little overwhelmed at the moment because my last few trips I um, have bought multiple books. So I have books everywhere that I'm reading. Um, I think I need to start a little book club. I know I've talked about that, but I'm not sure where that would be and where I could host it, but I think it'd be fun and we explore a variety of books. I'm just in the process of reading a novel that I'm really loving too. So anyway, big book lover. I am um, a fan of books. My whole entire life I've been a big reader. Um, my personal library is expanding and there are some books that I feel um, really compelled to share with you. So today's gonna be a little book talk. So let's get started. Okay, I'm gonna try really hard to get these books in frame for you. Kind of like my new setup. Um, it is limiting a tiny bit, but I like that you can get in nice and close. Let me know. This whole recording video is always a process. When you're an artist, you just wanna be an artist, but I have so much to share and I'm learning how to better my technology and recording process. <laughs> okay, so this book I picked up, um, I think I bought this one online. So How to Paint Like Turner. If you, um, if you haven't explored his watercolor paintings, they are just stunning. Um, I love, anyway, loose, transparent, watery watercolor. And this book is done really well. Look at that, just gorgeous. It's fire. I would never, I've never painted fire. I know, I've seen some artists paint fire and it's um, really beautiful. But I love that there's a step-by-step -step process in how this book is laid out. There's nothing that excites me more than to see an artist's um, sketchbook and study process. When I go to museums, I beeline for any of the glass um, display cabinets that showcase the sketches and the preliminary um, studies that the artists have created before painting their masterpieces. I just, I don't know, there's something about that process. That part feels so intimate um, and intimate personal when I look at artist sketchbooks. So look at that. Oh my God, sketchbooks. So this book is a great one. It is um, published by Tate, so Tate Museum in the UK. Um, it is again, step by step and uh, just allow me to look at different ways to use my watercolor in a more loose and flowy way um, and creates just some dynamic studies. So maybe I'll even have to share some of the pieces that I've painted using this book as reference, but even the cover, like look at the gorgeous, that beautiful turquoisey, cobalty blue next to the fiery reds and yellows. And then again, I just, yeah. Anyway, so how to paint like Turner. Um, Tate Museum, fantastic, fantastic book. So this book is actually, um, I haven't dived into this one as much. We went to Scotland um, in January and stayed in this beautiful Victorian estate home turned um, like in kind of, not even a hotel, but it was in sort of the, the highlands, not far north, but just a really beautiful remote area. Um, just had a beautiful time. We celebrated our 25th anniversary there. And they had art, so they actually have a catalog of their art collection that hangs in their estate, which I thought was amazing. So walking through all of the different, the drawing room and um, the, the billiards room, oh, it was just beautiful. So I was able to enjoy some beautiful original art and um, they had some amazing coffee table books there. So this one I ended up buying online um, used and then it was delivered by the time I got home. So again, another book by Tate. I'm going to have to explore their catalog um, of books that they've published because I think they're really interesting in how they're laid out. So this one is um, Color of Visual History. Andra Losky is the author. There isn't an author on the other book. 
Um, it again is a beautiful book on um, color and the use of color in history. I'm just going to randomly flip. But again, just the use of, you know, diagrams and looking at color studies um, over time. And even like, look at the inspiration for color swatching and just how you can make it beautiful. Old books. So it shares the history of color, the use of color by um, various artists and um, how just, you know, how they used it and the inspiration behind each each time in history as well as each artist again i haven't um read this one a ton yet oh, this page is stuck but if you're just into reading more about look at that page tableau synthetique so i wonder if those are synthetic colors um, and references but color categories um, it's just again a beautiful example great coffee table book if you're sitting down with a cup of tea and you, oh, there is your basic color wheel. And if you are looking just for a hit of inspiration, maybe to deep dive a little bit more um, into color, I highly recommend it. It's a beautiful book. I bought mine used, so it wasn't um, as expensive. So I feel like, again, being a hardcover coffee table book, it is a little bit more on the pricier side. So that is Color of Visual History. Now this book is one that I'm working through. I'm not quite sure. Um, I'm not quite sure on how I would rate it right now. And the reason is, is there's a lot of digital art, and not that I don't appreciate digital art. And I'm going to show you what I mean. Um, not that I don't appreciate digital art, but I want to see. I want to see hand painted, hand drawn strokes, if that makes sense. So I'm going to show you an example. A lot of it is, um, so if you're in animation, illustration, um, then this probably would be something that speaks to you. Um, for me, it is a little too digital, if that makes sense. But it's a really great, great process. Again, I didn't go to art school, so there's a lot of fundamental studies that um, I feel like I've missed out on. I'm kind of happy I didn't go in some ways because I've made my own rules, if that makes sense. Um, but I thought if there is something new that I can learn and work through, so there again, another digital um, painting, which is still stunning and amazing, um, but I want to see actual brush strokes and pencil lines and just, I am um, traditional in that way, traditional. I don't know if that's the right term or not, but it's a great study for looking at composition and uh, vanishing points and, and learning again. So I'm excited to go. And I think this is why I bought the book because I'm, again, just working on my portrait studies. And sometimes the information is repetitive because there are only you know so many ways that you can approach drawing and mapping out um, a human face but I like perspective. I like to learn from a variety of teachers, whether they're through books or courses. So I wanna see if there are new perspectives. And sometimes, even though the information may be the same, the way it's presented is a little bit different. So it kind of seeps in um, in a different way or it hits in a different way. So it might be information that I've read over and over again, but it's just the way that this person has presented it, that it's finally connected and I have these aha moments. So. I'll have multiple books about the human form and um, creating, again, just plateaus and depths and and even learning how to mathematically figure out the um, correct dimension and space and size between the forms in the body. I wonder if this is digital or pencil, because sometimes a digital drawing looks like it could be done by pencil. Um, yeah, so this is, it's a good book so far. I'm going to lose my, my place. I think I was here. Um, it's a good book so far. Again, I think I got this one online. Um, but it's, yeah, it's a really great fundamental art book. If you're learning, maybe you're like me, you didn't go to art school. So if you're learning a little bit more um, about, you know, processes and techniques that are a little more formalized, then this book could be the one for you. Okay, so there you have it. These are the three books that are currently on my um, credenza back there. Oh, and you, I can show you my Watercolor Made Simple book, of course, and that's why 
um, you know, these books that I am producing, whether they're traditionally published or I publish them myself, um, I'm leaning on those more because I feel like when you have a tangible item in hand, you can take it with you. You don't need to be connected to the internet necessarily. Um, I love to be able to flip through and be able to consume in um, bits, but have it all laid out for me. And I think books are a really important thing to have in your space. So there are my three that I am working on now. Let me know in the comments if you'd like for me to share on a more regular basis, um, what books I'm currently using, what books I'm even reading. I can bring in a few of my novels that I love. The last two are actually about bookstores, <laughs> which is really funny. Um, I think it's that whole idea of, you know, having a, a warm drink in a bookstore, an old bookstore to boot, um, and really just enjoying an afternoon. That's that would be my ideal time. Um, thank you for watching. And if you love this video, please give me the thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed so you get notified when I am releasing a new video. Thank you and I will see you next time. Happy reading.